Welcome to Elven Plot Armor and welcome to Immortal Empires. Uh, we are doing Imric today and I'm going to give you guys a breakdown from a High Elf Main's perspective. What's changed, not just for Imric, but how we actually navigate him now because he has a similar start, but everything around him's kind of changed and uh, we're going to drill into the best way to go about his start and the things you need to know about what tactical buildings have been changed. I tried to stick around just the regular area to start with, see what moved around me, then I got bored and expanded a bit and the victory conditions are much simpler this time all we have to do is uh, i think we've already got the small the short victory the prize is you get plus three to all your hero caps which is really really nice you only have to take out the pox makers of nurgle and clan rictus both of which aren't too difficult but we're going to see today that clan rictus is something you should leave at least until you're taking care of the pox makers of nurgle okay so uh this is one we've done here so i've shown you this uh finished product to show you where I think we should keep ourselves confined in those early stages of the game. We've got ourselves built up defensively with Cathay here. We of course have our uh, lovely trade equipment with Ying as that is important to too many people. Coming down to the south here, we'll need to remove Kurgath from here. So that'll be one of the first things we do. They've also introduced the islands down here. So we'll eventually try to confederate these guys. Either way, make them a defensive ally so they can get roped into any wars and hopefully they feel the heat and will eventually want to confederate with you. Uh, same with Teclas. Teclas starting a bit further down the coastline here. Again, just keep an eye on him, confederate him when you can. But uh, in this game, they've definitely made confederations much harder. So the last thing we need to look at is, well, how far to the west do we go? We have Nagashazir here, which is unique because it starts off at about tier five, tier four or tier five, I can't remember, but there's uh, basically some defensive rats that live there that won't really come for you. But here's the catch, the unique building isn't that good. It only gives you an extra couple hundred gold. And more importantly, if you're expanding here, you are in the rat zone. They can underpass around here. You take several turns to weave around here. You're playing their game on their rules. Big mistake in my opinion, right? So what we'll do is we'll probably take the bit of bay because ports are nice and we'll make that our frontier there. We're not gonna go take the dark hold. As soon as we get past here, all of these early factions, including Tretch, will come down there. It, again, if we have obstacles in the way, we're playing their game on their terms. We wanna be in the open and preferably close to the coast. So let's just, we're gonna make a stop there. Move across, take uh, Pig Barter. This is a nice choke point, it's a capital. We'll also take the Black Fortress. Again, see, we've got choke points with capitals. And then, of course, remove Kurgath from here, which will probably be where this guide ends. There's also a bug at the moment, the Confederation quest with uh, getting Kalidor. It's not working. I've tried it multiple times, I've made CA aware of it. Hopefully by the time you guys get your hands on it, it will be fixed, but currently, can't do it. So here we are, of course, choosing Imric, using Legendary very hard, and we're just gonna run everything on the default. It is time for Kalidor to rise once again. All right, so first thing we're going to do is, of course, starting off, get Michaela. she's always the MVP. And we're going to fight this on the battlefield. We're on the battlefield now. Make sure you have your archers hotkeyed one number. Spears on the flanks. And we'll keep our mage not too far back. And we'll keep Imric here. We'll have the cavalry on one side. Dragon on the other. We want this up front because we're going to bait out the artillery rounds. I try to use non-spammy compositions where possible. Using things like cav and infantry. But something like this. You can't stand there and get bombarded on legendary. When they have an artillery advantage. So I think they need to nerf the dragon movement. It's been buffed way too much. It's just ridiculous. This thing is as nimble as an eagle now. So what we can do now is hook around and breathe fire. There we go, it's one unit nearly crippled. And just keep launching those fireballs. Okay, we're gonna send our cavalry up one flank. That's the one cheesy one we're going to do. So that one, we got the cheesy one out of the way. That showed you how to do it. If you really want to pull uh, all the punches, you can auto resolve this fight, by the way. Don't want him less than half dead. Just to make sure we don't accidentally kill him. All right, now fingers crossed the army should live. So this time we want to take this. We want the influence, all right? Our goal is to rack up. Damn it, he died. I can never seem to keep this guy alive. If anyone else manages it, let me know in the comments because I always kill that dude. Go down the blue line here. We want to get Quartermaster, Feared and Renown. All about cost reduction and then we'll go down Kalendor and Cumbent. I've done this is Total War with this guy. This is a really effective way to run his skills. All right, on the battlefield, you might start over there. It's easiest in my opinion just to start over here. We're going to start right up on the line. Always shields in front. This is why you always go shieldman. 
I know you can get rangers. You only ever maybe want one unit of rangers. They have one good matchup, and that's Skaven. As, as well as goblins, they're good against them. Otherwise, shields and spears and bows. Cool, so just make sure that dragon always keeps moving. If you need to, hold shift and just draw objects. Okay, let's charge these guys with our cav. And now their backs are facing our archers. This is exactly what we wanted. Okay, cool. Pin them in place to the Emmerich. And then get the dragon breath. Cool. Alright. Alright, cool. And of course we will occupy it. So we don't need anything from this building so we're going to trash the barracks and we'll build the plaza for public order. Get wary, we'll be fighting Skaven so I always prioritize this. You actually use that, you don't really use the others as much. Research, always get archery prowess first, then spear wall, militia training. So getting the archers and the spears up to where they need to be and they'll carry you. We could technically gift him but let's not worry about it. They will be our border though, so we don't want to be hostile to them. They are stopping us from having to deal with anything else this side. So here at Nagashazar are our sedentary Skaven, and they're basically pacifists. They don't really fight, so this is going to be our border here. But we could take Bit of Bay, and we're going to. So we're going to hire. So it doesn't matter, so we just want one which doesn't have global bonuses, right? So we'll go this one here. It's going to boost the enemy missile resistance, but we don't care. She's going to make her way down there and capture that settlement for us. Emery could use another two regular archers and that's it. Just a quick reminder guys, if you are enjoying the video, please consider liking and subscribing. It really helps out. Ask any question in the comments. I answer everything. And if you'd like to talk strategy, feel free to join the Discord. Cheers. So here we are, a special mission to regain Kalidor. We need to occupy, raise or sack six different settlements. Uh, thing is, it's not working currently, but let's just imagine that it is. We're going to march our secondary lord down here to take Bitter Bay next turn. And as for Imric, he's just going to march up here. So follow the line if we were to attack it. It leads to this road intersecting the border. Hop into encamp stance, not that it really helps. And uh, just hire two more archers. We'll want a noble, so build the noble building. Even if you trash it afterwards, just get it. Get nobles on the field, they are amazing. Turn three, let's get ourselves our second settlement. So, Imric, charge up there. And once again, we'll just do this on the field because we can do it much better than they could. But truth be told, if you need to auto resolve these, you pretty much can. This is tends to be what I do. I tend to fast forward my battles and do really bad, but I get bored. Yeah, we probably could have done better, but the most important thing is that we kept the units alive that we were meant to, even though I totally brutalized the Sun Dragon. Uh, we're going to occupy it. So if you wanted to rush the confederation, you could sack one turn and then occupy the next and that will count for two on your quest log. But here's the deal, even normally I would not rush that, right? You want to be more established here. Don't migrate to Ulth 1. There's no point ever giving up territory. I know migrations are a fun idea, but even when you want to sort of move your base from one place to another, never give that territory up. Fortify it, manage your diplomacy and use it as a tax bank for the rest of your conquest, right? No point giving stuff up, especially in these critical early turns. So we're not trying to rush that confed, so we're just going to uh, occupy here. And that's given us a bit more in the bank, and that'll give us enough. Ah, oh, we don't have enough, what the fuck? Oh no, oh, that's unlucky. Last time it's because I killed the Lord. It's this guy right here. Normally I would have killed him, but he was somehow, he was out of the settlement and ah. Uh, that's so annoying. So normally you'd have the money, right? When you have the money, you'll be able to capture this for only two and a half thousand. But we can't. So if you're following this, you're doing better than me. Good on you. Okay, let's get, of course, one point burning head. Next one goes in Kindle Flame. They've nerfed the damage on burning head. It was certainly overpowered before. Uh, and we're just going to keep our numbers at this. This is more than enough to deal with what we need at this point. So don't inflate your military when you're playing on Legendary. Oh, now here he is. Over the end turn, he's decided to throw himself at us. There we are. I always do. So now that we're in turn four, we're going to not go north. So the Dark Hole does have a really great building there, which gives you like 300 gold per turn. That is valuable right now, but you know what else is valuable? is having a territory where you're not going to have to spend to hold it, and you can most easily do this by having capitals with walls. These guys here often declare war on you around now-ish, but they do take a while to get their stuff together. But first, we build that up, and also we need another 2,000 up our sleeve to build this port, 
and that will get us a nice amount of income coming in. And of course, now that you're done with her, just disband. So for this turn, Imrik is just going to bunk up in uh, the Fortress of Varag. Turn 5, and because it's a while since we're going to see any High Elves, this is a great time to use Invocation of Eldrazor. It's going to boost our experience that we gained from Imrik, as well as uh, any nobles that are around. So. It's also a good time to hire a noble. Now, we don't have enough influence to get a good noble, but we can get a crap one to do some scouting and get some influence for us. That's the least diabolical of them. We'll run him ahead. As for Emery, turn six and our research is ready. We've got our archers uh, boosted by 15% and now we need spearball, but I'll just go all the way across here because both spearmen and archers are your cornerstone. We're just gonna move him up this way and he'll be able to look through here. It gets a bit more dicey up here, but just always check anyone before you declare war. That's looking good. They're not at war with anyone, so we can't schmooze up to anyone by joining this conflict. So we'll just have to start it the old fashioned way. Declare war, yep, and charge in. Oh, it says low. What is, what is it, what's this gonna do? Ouch. That's not, not too bad, I guess, so let's occupy. Now we're trying to save our money up for the port over here so we don't want to spend all of our pennies yet because we're only one turn away. Alright turn 7 so we're going to move up here, try to follow the pathway as much as you can and just before here there's a spot that doesn't give us any attrition. I'm going to sit on the very edge there and hop in ambush stance. Throw our noble inside here and get a little bit extra replenishment plus if they do come through we will really wreck them on that ambush. Kindle flame just keep powering up burning head. And we now have enough money, as well as the construction ready to build our port. So this will revolt. You can defeat it with the garrison on an auto resolve the first time, and the second time you only need a lord and one unit. So the first two revolts, the second one will be around turn 20-ish. Turn 8, at any time between now and sort of turn 12, you'll start to see these traders. Best thing with high elves is we can see their entire network by trading with them. Do not trade with the rebels, it just upsets them. and we would pay for that. This is just a conversation starter, nothing meant by it. Let's take these guys on. Ah, oh, we lost a bit more than I wanted. Go take this. And we don't have too much left. Cool, and we really don't need to hire more troops, so this little compact army is doing quite well, so no need to inflate that military. I'm more worried about money than losing the battlefield, so we're gonna get Quartermaster. Why don't Lightning Strike and then Fear to Renown? So while you might be tempted to go out here, it is capital, right? But we don't need to go that far out. Let's just go instead, skip that, and we're gonna come down here. He'd have to get past that capital here, giving us time to uh, fortify there. So let's just march down and go for Cougar. He usually hasn't got all four. This is pretty sad, he's usually got this or this left over. Now if the lizards still own Dreadrock, that's okay because it kind of gives us a buffer between there and uh, these rather undefended ports which we don't want him to get to, okay? They're kind of our exposed underbelly, so to protect those instead, we're going to go down here first and finish off the lizards. Now that seems a bit counterproductive, but if we force march, we should be able to get there with a regular march next turn. Okay, so we've got a bit of public order issues coming up, so we've got a revolt in about six turns, in about 10 turns, and this one in about two turns. So I know that that garrison could hold there, but we just need to be mindful of this. Can we trade with you? We can. Cool. Don't trade with the dissenters. So they're traitors. I'll we'll make it back in 10 turns. I'll permit this audience. Sure. I will allow it. You're worth it. Hopefully that keeps you alive. She's getting bollocked there. Okay, going back to Emmerich. Now, hopefully we can make this. Cool. The dragon's rage. And we will certainly need to fight this. And on the battlefield, as usual, just moving ourselves up forward gently, and we will need to just blast that tower away. Alright, uh, we won that. We're going to occupy it. We can replenish our troops, so we'll do exactly that. Uh, we'll start to get a 
bit of a bigger army now because we'll be fighting more. Now in terms of rights, there's two things we could do. So if we were going to travel down this way, if the last settlement was in here, you could choose to use the Invocation of Isha, which gives you immunity to uh, attrition until then by getting plus four control and some influence because we really need influence. We need to get some better heroes in our armies and that's how we do it. So we're going to get ourselves another archer on global. We'll be able to get to 20 units by the end of turn 11. Turn 11 and we have our first dragon sighting. So who do we have? We have Shackalock the Calamity, the best dragon to get first. We'll get the same one that we got before. And she'll instigate the battle for us. And Imre can hire another one spear, two more archers. Just keep it on his armies. Try to keep tabs on them because you do not want them getting a head start over here. If they do, we are screwed. We have a dilemma. I just don't want to spend money right now. There's our rebellion. So here's 8 versus uh, 8 there, so we should be fine with that. Let's start this dragon battle, and we'll just challenge. We could... Nah, we'll get the dragon. And now we can go and take his capital. He's left it unguarded. Always go for Dreadrock first if you can, because we're going to block his advance in every other direction by taking that. First, you'll have to manually enter the border, and then click on the settlement. Well, it seems to think we could take this with uh, very little casualty, so... I'm happy with that. Good amount of influence there. We are very, very close to being able to get this emollient. We'll just hire a high mage here. She's got ridiculed, which is the best of the bad traits because it only slows you down hiring phoenixes. And we'll just get a couple of units here. It, this might be overkill, but I really don't want to lose this. This is pretty much an inevitability. He'll always declare war on you at some point, and that's why we don't expand in here because he can dart around much quicker than we can, okay? So, we just have to make sure he doesn't jump over and take that. Oh no. Oh no. Okay, so he'll be taking this settlement here because it's unfortified, but we have a capital here, so we should be okay. Turn 13, and a lot of heat on us at the moment, so Shattered Stone, let's check that garrison. Nothing too impressive. Kugath probably does have his starting army, so let's go take him on. Have some fun and shoot him apart, but Let's just keep this going. I need to show you how this unfolds because we've got a few more challenges and we've got ourselves a trait. Plus 30 growth locally, that's all right. We'll drop our frugal lord here. So this decreases upkeep. It's one of the best nobles you can get. Imric's our biggest army, so let's put him in there. This frees up this noble now, so we'll keep him in there over the end turn to give some replenishment. And then we'll send him over to discover Teclas and start that relationship. Okay, we'll hire another army right here just to, just to make sure they don't get any further past. And up here, because this is in a riskier spot, I'm going to suck it up and just build walls here. Now that Clan Moors has declared war on us by bankrolling this guy, so let's give him one, two gifts. What we're doing is helping ourselves, because if he holds out there longer, that's more time till they get to us. Turn 14, uh, this army isn't slowing down, they've got a full stack, so we need to match that. Let's get two more archers there. Uh, no one else has jumped through this side here. Quickhead Taker hasn't come through. The Dark Holder has fallen, and I think that might be Tretch Craven Tail. If we check the diplomacy screen, so he's got four settlements. Uh, Clan Wars only have three, so nothing too much to worry about. Bad news is, is he's going to do some damage there. So we can head back there with Imric. Life Mage with only 15% less speed on the battlefield. We can live with that. Cool. Alright, so this is going to leave us pretty poor by the end of all of it, but we got to do what we need to do. So we'll probably sack and then take it. No, so the reason why I didn't take it is because I had an army nearby. They don't take something that they know that you're just going to take right back. Alright, we'll fight this on the battlefield. Now, there we go, just a ton of dragon fire and uh, yeah, easy wins. And let's finish off. Helm and Gorst. We're in our own territory, so we're fine to auto-resolve that. And we're going to fly our dragons in and start doing some serious fire damage. This is obviously a very rough matchup for him, being weak to fire, and we've got a metric ton of it. Oh, man. Did you just eat Gorst? <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> run this guy through. Ah, uh, there we are. So he does have some more troops. The good thing is he'll 
not see them and he'll hopefully move through. They're just trash zombie stacks so we should be fine taking care of them. So I've worked out what I'm going to do with this army. If They can actually travel a really good amount. This guy can move down here. It'll cost more if I put him in the army so we just keep them apart purely for that purpose. We are also going to try to discover Teclas now. He might be in a bad way, we don't know, but if he is, we'll be able to rescue him. Turn 16, let's take this uh, settlement back off these guys. We could go back and try to calm things down there, but we may as well. We are stretching ourselves a little bit thin, but once we've got this, I'm kind of happy with the territory we've got. So next turn, next turn, easy. Alright, so they're set up to finish him off next turn. Let's go discover Teclas. Okay, so we've been attacked over the end turn. I summon the winds! For our ancestors! True magic! Build that up, it'll take a while. Okay, we need to survive two turns to be able to resist this guy. That's how her. It's okay, we'll get some money for this. Alright, wipe this army. Take the gold. Okay, so it's three turns if I'm there. I can get it in two turns. Turn 18, we're going to keep moving our noble down until we find Teclas. We're now freed up to move this guy a little bit closer. We can't get to land this turn, but we will be able to next turn. Alright, and we're just going to have to sit Emmerich in uh, ambush stance. And this will form our border. We're not going any further past than this. Alright, next turn we need 4,000 gold. Okay, we need to make some savings. Nice. Okay, we should be able to defeat this army. Excellent, we just want it wiped. I don't care about farming anything for experience. Take it. And this is another one we'll have to put walls up ourselves. Doesn't come with walls. Turn 20, let's move as close to the coast as we can. Alright, we didn't uncover Teclas just yet, but it looks like we will get him next turn and we can start diplomacy. Once we've got this up to tier 3, build a mage tower, the simple reason being precise fletchlings and martial lore, two of your best researchers. They will help your basic archers and spearmen punch up a bit longer, as well as light Ithlamar armor, another really great piece of research. Uh, as well as that, you want to get your walls up here on the Bone Gulch, that up to tier 3, so if they do decide to leapfrog underneath, you'll stop them there. Things should be going pretty smooth with these guys. You know what, that's probably still worth getting. All right, so we've just paid for non-aggression with those guys. It also gives them some money, which is quite important because we don't want them to fall behind. Uh, we want to get tier three walls up here. Starts with walls, we will get that. That will also have walls, of course. And uh, now there's just a little bit of a mess here, but it's not gonna be too hard to get rid of. We're about three turns away from owning all of that and then you can start taking this and then you've got fortifications all the way around here. Like I said earlier, the ability to get the Kalador Confederation quest working isn't currently working. Hopefully by the time you guys get your hands on it, but you just want a nice defensive territory with lots of walls, lots of defensive prospects and that's it. Uh, that's it for this video guys, thanks so much for watching and if you have found it helpful at all, please consider liking and subscribing, it helps us out a ton. And comment below what you would like to see next. This is Elven Plot Armor, cheers for watching and I'll see you next time.